Okay, hello again, Science30. This is a, another video on the blood flow throughout the heart, heart structures, and more specifically, this is regarding the beating of the heart during a um, heartbeat event. So the heart is a, it's a pump, right? We have to remember that the beating of the heart is controlled so that the heart can pump blood throughout the body. The heart is a very effective pump and it beats anywhere between 60 to 75 times in a single minute, depending on the person's health, age, fitness level. Um, two sides of the heart beat uh, at the same time. So the we have got the left and the right side of the heart, but we've also got the atria and the ventricles, the top chambers and the bottom chambers. And so the two sides of the heart beat in unison or together. The atria are going to pump first, left and right, and then the ventricles are going to pump next, left and right. So when we measure a heartbeat, we've already mentioned what blood pressure looks like. It's measured in uh, two numbers, a top number and a bottom number. And so the top number is systole and the bottom number is diastole. So the systolic blood pressure is the, when the heart, more specifically the ventricles, those bottom chambers are squeezing and they're contracting. The heart is pumping blood out either to the lungs or to the aorta and the body. Diastole is when the heart, or more specifically the ventricles, are going to relax and then the heart starts to fill because the blood in the atria, left and right atrium, start to enter the heart. And so diastole, we've got the uh, heart ventricles relaxed and they fill. And then the systole is when the ventricles are contracting and the AV valves are shut, the semilunar valves are open and blood is leaving either the right atrium to go to the pulmonary circulation or the left atrium to go to the aortic systemic body circulation. So there's some labels here for us, right? I've got our AV valves, got our semilunar valves. Let's just break this down into steps. And so the cardiac cycle or the actual pumping of the heart occurs in, at, the, at its simplest, these four steps. Step one, the heart relaxes and the atria fill with blood. Right? These top two chambers are going to fill with blood. The right atrium is going to fill from blood, uh, deoxygenated blood from the inferior and superior vena cava. The left atrium at the same time is going to fill with blood from the uh, pulmonary veins, oxygenated blood. That blood is going to enter the atria. The AV valves in that particular moment are going to be shut because the atria are trying to fill. Step number two, those AV valves are going to open and blood's going to enter the ventricles. The left ventricle and the right ventricle are going to fill, and the semilunar valves are going to stay shut. Step number three, the AV valves are going to close. These valves that were currently open previously to fill the ventricles from the atria, they shut, and then the semilunar valves open, and this allows blood to get pushed out either from the right ventricle through the AV valve, sorry, the semilunar valve, and into the pulmonary circulation, or the left atrium is going to constrict, uh, shutting the AV valve, opening the semilunar valve to allow that blood to go through the aorta and into the blood. Keep in mind the blues and the reds are, again, repeating our description of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Step four, we start it all over. So this is a heartbeat. The top of the heart, the atria contract to push blood into the ventricles while the ventricles are relaxed. Then the atria relax, the AV valves shut, the ventricles contract and push blood out. So it looks like this. This is a wonderful animation. We can see the top of the heart and the bottom of the heart squeeze at the same time. So the top of the heart, left and right, atria squeeze, and then the ventricles, left and right, squeeze. And then the top atria squeeze, and then separately the ventricle squeeze. And so we've got this lub and this dub that classic heartbeat that you hear is due to the atria squeezing together and then the ventricles squeezing together. And we can see exactly where blood is going, filling the atria at the same time, pushing out into the ventricles, ventricle squeeze, pushing blood out either to the pulmonary circulation in the lungs or the systemic circulation through the aorta. You should be able to describe this order. You should be able to describe that the left and right hand sides of the heart are going to work in unison in the atria and then in unison in the ventricles. And please remember that if the AV valves are open, the semilunar valves are closed. And if the semilunar valves are open, 
the AV valves must be closed. If there's ever an issue with the valves, then you've got a heart disorder, you could have irregular heartbeats, you could have backflow through these valves, all of which are going to cause medical issues, cardiovascular issues. Uh, cardiovascular exercise, well, the more that you exercise uh, in a day and the more regular you are, then the more blood your heart can pump. This doesn't mean that your heart is going to become jacked and muscular. It just means that the heart becomes more elastic and works more efficiently. So your heart has to work less hard to pump blood when you're fit than it does when you're not fit. So when you're not fit, your heart has to work harder to pump the same amount of blood in the same way. So people who are very fit, like athletes, are going to have a lower resting heart rate because their heart does not have to work on average as hard to get blood where it needs to go. Okay, that's it for this video. The next video, we're going to start talking about blood, what's in blood, and the immune system. Thanks, guys.